well, let's go ahead and get into the uh, main few topics that we wanted to talk about. The NFL craze. The craze that's going on in this hobby that's caused basketball collectors to just put on their football jersey and put their Zion jersey in the closet. Um, we're going to start with some mosaic early pricing. Uh, first off, there's some guys that are just absolutely insane. Um, Drew Locke, first mosaic. Second year? Second year gold, power prism. <laughs> um, 10 of 10, SP rare. Uh, they want the only the low, low price of 20 grand. So if you're a big Drew Locke collector, you, there's only 10 of them out there. I mean, 20 grand, you might be able to offer him $5 and get it. I don't know, but uh, 20 grand, and it's his first mosaic. So literally the whole set is the first mosaic. I think... I think you gotta. You got a rookie card every card. No, then. no, but you you gotta be you gotta be clear with this. This, this is a uh, this is somebody asking this price. This is not what it sold for. It didn't it didn't sell. Yes, so, I'll make that so very I know, clear. I know you're going for the old shock value, but I think you're going to confuse people because they're going to be like, I got one of those cards, and <laughs> now <laughs> I now Doug says I got twenty grand. I got twenty I'm grand. Retiring. Like you can't. I mean, what if what if you you can't stop somebody from being like, in the listing. And then they link up the Mojo Break hype, and they're like, Doug said it was 20 grand. We don't get that many listeners, but I'm maybe. just saying. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Just saying. One day we'll be as good as uh, Run Good Life. But um, anyways, uh, some of the um, uh, stained glass uh, that are out are, are selling pretty well. We got uh, Tom Brady, recent one, uh, sold for $500. And a Patrick Mahomes sold for $1,000. And these don't seem that they're that rare. Um, so this is kind of shocking to me. These are both more than I would have thought. What are you guys' thoughts on these mosaic uh, stained glass? You know, if I was to put a number on it, if I had to stamp it, say like, this is what the print run on on these on these mosaic stained glass. Five thousand. Wow. Mm, yeah. No, not that. High. Yeah. No. Well, you got to think their retail still gonna gonna get gonna, gonna come out. And there's probably gonna they're probably gonna be in retail. You're getting you're getting three. Stained I think glass is hobby exclusive. Okay, fine, yeah, yeah. fine. Thank, thanks, thanks for uh, pointing that out. What about <laughs> what about no huddle though? We don't no know. No huddle. We don't, we, don't, we, don't we, don't we don't know. We don't know. But how many subjects are on that subset? Probably like 10, 20, 12, 20 maybe. Fifteen names. Maybe? 20? Twenty. You're getting three per case <clears throat> on average. Three, four. Well, we were talking about that with basketball. Okay, though, okay, may, okay, okay, okay. Over, I do. I, I do feel I, like we had the I, same talk. I over. I over. We had, we said I over exaggerated. I shock value for the for the <laughs> fine people at home watching. Not five thousand, but twenty five hundred. And I don't think you can dispute that. I don't think you can. No twenty. Yeah. 9, I mean, I'm gonna say twenty four nine nine nine. Okay. Uh, I I'll say fifteen hundred copies, bro, of each player. Let's see if we fourteen ninety nine. I'm, I'm trying to find the, no. the mosaic. Twenty five hundred. And I and I think I'm being conservative. With that. <clears throat> yeah, um, I mean I'm gonna go with the same argument I made as uh, we did for LeBron mosaics in uh, basketball stained glass. It doesn't matter. It's the uh, yeah. It's it's it the it, like we can actually. The have demand it. is still higher than than the than the card count for for the for Patrick Mahomes. You know, I can't say that about anybody else, but right now Patrick Mahomes, I I feel like will keep his value. But you know, what, we'll see. at what point, C Rad, do you feel that there's too much? supply for the demand if if you got a stained glass insert in every box mm -hmm. do you think that it would 10 on the checklist i feel like yeah if it mm, i can't even say that because we're t we talk about how rare prism silvers are in football and you get one of those per box but i mean uh, granted the name checklist is like 300 compared yeah, to yeah like you can 20, get anybody but, right so um yeah, if, if yeah, if, if if it's only twenty names and then you get one per, if it was really one per box, it's ten. It's ten, ten names. Ten names. It's ten names. Yeah. yeah. So now, now my it went from twenty five to like four thousand. Back to five thousand. Yeah. yeah that, you got 4, you got you got Mahomes, Brady, Lamar, Elliott, Drew Locke, which I'm surprised made the list. Aaron Rodgers, Saquon, Gardner Minshew, Jimmy Garoppolo, and Russell Wilson. So they're actually yeah. What's up with Drew Locke? Yeah. That there's list? no there's no Murray. Why so, would you not have Murray? What, what's no with, Danny Dots? What's up with Gardner Minshew? Yeah, and Gardner Minshew. They, uh, whew, that must have been a late meeting real quick. Uh, <laughs> maybe, but maybe. I don't have a slide for this, but this came out the other day. Did you see that they're going to have Color blast. stained glass in prism as well? Different design. So if you look at it, I got you guys can Google it. I'm sorry we don't have a slide for it. I but get back to C-Rad. Stained glass on the prism. I get back to C-Rad. At, no at what point does the supply 
outweigh the demand? It's hard. To, it's hard to answer that question because our our hobby is always growing nowadays. I, uh, like more and more people come in every day. It's like. Mm. You know I, I mean? yeah I mean it, it, you, it's hard to really throw out any data you why, have but why is everybody gravitating towards these like what Panini is trying to call ultra rare yeah or rare parallels mm-hmm. they're not that rare yeah um I I think that I mean is it the design it looks pretty cool I mean I actually I know it's basically the same design but I felt like basketball looked better for some reason I don't know maybe just wasn't the colors the, pop wasn't better wasn't the original one like kind of a an acrylic acetate they've had different ones over the years they yeah. keep trying to roll it out i'm actually like, surprised I, it's like stuck. like the the acetate one i think would be the true stained glass yeah and they do have the color blast in prism football as well which will be very very rare i hope unless they ruin that one but uh so but back to mosaic we've got some other prices there was a one of one aaron Rodgers. i can't find out what exactly it sold for but the guy had it for 10k or best offer and it sold so a one of one black mosaic and the guy put sick in the in the in the listing as well which was probably the reason it sold let's be honest it said somebody put sick in the title and that's that's what i search i search sick one of one so it probably it probably it probably sold for nine grand because of that yeah i mean black one of one sick and um (laughs) And some autos, these surprised me, actually. These are a little bit higher than I thought, but um, it is the first week of yeah. Mosaic. Uh, you have a, a Tua Silver Mosaic rookie auto, not numbered, that sold for $1,700, obviously not graded. And a Joe Burrow Silver Mosaic that sold for $1,500. Um, and then thi- that, but that, that's, uh, that's Tua overselling Burrow for the same card. Well, the Tua was sold on the 12th, which was on Saturday, and the Burrow was sold on Monday. So <clears throat> maybe it was that, you know, I also, out quick kind of type hype. I will say, because I opened up so much of this over the weekend, they're, they're extremely tough to pull. Yeah, we pulled, rookies. I think we pulled two Tuas. We got lucky, but no. we did not pull any Joe I don't. Burrows. I think without a doubt, the, Autos top, the top quarterbacks are short printed. Yep. Um, there is Patrick Queen. There's a lot more Patrick Queen autos in this product Play than there is. On. Yeah. Oh, I should have checked watch count. So D uh, D Porter in the chat said the Aaron Rodgers sold for three k. Sick. <laughs> Sick. Wait, wait. Watch count still works? I thought that thing. I thought that died like months ago. I think ago. they fixed it. So, so what do you guys think? Before we move on to some parallels that have sold, do you think that these are kind of what you guys had in mind, or are these, in your opinion, too high? Like, whoever wants to take it first. And what do you guys think in the chat? Got it. I'll take it. I'll take <laughs> You'll it run first. with it. I'll run with it. Like Cam um, Akers. <laughs> you know, we're at a point now, and again, I'm old school. I'm what they call a dinosaur in this industry. Uh, You're all weathered. I I would gravitate and go, man. I would prefer I would prefer the auto than any parallel you could find. Any any parallel, even a numbered like a like a number to ten gold version non auto. I would rather have the rookie auto than than that card, but value wise, that's incorrect. The right. the the non the non autos and parallels that that's the that's the new collector game right there. Mm-hmm. We already talked about it's it. That that's, young man music. It's, it is it is it is that guitar, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> that's actually the old man music yeah, the guitar. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I would I would go with the auto, and I think that's a good price. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I agree. I think I, th- I feel like the prices are in line with what the, what the product is going for right now. Um, so it, it doesn't seem too high to me. I think it seems too high for me if I'm going to invest. I think I still maybe it's a, the the old man way of thinking, but I'm going to wait for contenders. I'm going to try to buy one of these contenders. Those I know contenders the contenders are going to be, gonna out be of the way world, higher out than of this world. Bro. But I'm going to save that fifteen hundred and apply <laughs> it to a contenders auto. Well, who knows? You um, know, cont- contenders is you know contenders. There you go. Man, we're getting good use out of this twenty dollar dinosaur. We who are. knows? We'll, we'll see. Gotta, we got to use it. But every time you say something that's a dinosaur perspective, maybe, you get the dinosaur. May, maybe shiny. Maybe. Shiny Shiny is the new wave, and, and and stuff like contenders autos are are, are are old news, man. We'll see. Could be, could be. I mean, one thing to keep in mind too with um, Mosaic is, it, I believe there's only the base, a gold, and a one hundred one. That's it. There's no other numbering on the autos, I believe, unless Choice and Huddle has different numberings. But from the hobby perspective, it's just the base, the gold, the ten, and the one hundred one. So, which I believe I heard that Joe Burrow was pulled the one hundred one already. Um, this was shocking. So. 
Kyler Murray, numbered out of 10, and it's pack fresh as opposed to pack unfresh, went for $1,000. A Kyler Murray gold second year went for $1,000. Yeah, rookie mosaic, I guess. No, no, it's the the flame emojis. Ooh, that's what sold it, huh? Yeah. Flame gold. The other one had sick. This one had the flame emojis. I'm a buyer at the flame emojis. Four out of ten. I mean, there wasn't any Kyler card last year that was selling for that price that wasn't autographed. No, sir. Um, no, sir. And then you have a silver Joe Burrow uh, SSP rare, the guy put on the title, 970. So this really is what, speaking to this whole craze right now, is this Joe Burrow's card. $970. There is five silvers in a hobby box. Obviously, the checklist is pretty big, um, but... Once again, we don't know how many there are made of this. Um, I'm assuming the silvers are not going to only be in hobby. Those are going to be in the no huddle. Are they in the choice? Well, the silvers, yes. You get okay. one silver a box, and you don't know who it's going to well, be. Well, my, my, my point exactly with the previous slide, for $1,400, I can get a Joe Burrow auto. Uh, Doug, myself, C-Rad, we've opened up a lot of Mosaic since it came out. I have not pulled a Joe Burrow auto. You have not pulled a Joe Burrow auto. Have you pulled a Joe Burrow? No. Um, I have personally pulled multiple Joe Burrow sil- silvers already. Yes, me too. Um, and you probably You guys have? have? Yeah. No, you haven't? I've pulled maybe two. Uh, okay. Well, but we haven't pulled any autographs. Yeah. But we've pulled, let's say, let's say we've pulled about eight to ten Joe Burrow regular silvers. Obviously, not as short printed as the auto. Why would you not want the auto for fourteen hundred when you you're you're getting or or nine hundred a thousand? Very good point. A thousand dollars for point. the autograph, which I can tell you right now, there is less autos than Joe Burrow silvers. But so this, what, this what's, what's going down? This new wave of collectors does not want ink on their card anymore. That's the thing. That's that's what I can kind of extrapolate for this whole situation is that these these folks, these new collectors that have came over from basketball. They're so used to getting the team all and all this stuff that doesn't have any autographs that they don't want to buy the no, autograph. No, 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 no. The, no. Nobody knows about team all. <clears throat> Everybody knows nobody, about team all. Nobody, nobody, there's no collect. No, they know about, they know about that, the, you know, the blasters and stuff like that. They, I, I don't know if, I don't know if the general collectors even know about the Asia releases until a group breaker here in the state starts uh, breaking I, it. No, I think it's actually a lot more popular than you think. I've talked to multiple people that they have people rel- – maybe it's just around here, but around here people know about it because they can have people buy it for them or they go over there and buy it. I, I would say generally a lot of people who are introduced in the hobby that are introduced to the T-Malls and the, the Maybe Asia the T-Mall was a are bad inter- example. Are, inter- are introduced – through domestic breaks. Okay, the T-Mall was a bad example, but I think the, f- the basketball model was a good example of Panini trying to make as many cards as they can in a year without using autographs. I think we've been saying that before. We've that, been saying this that. Is, so this is, this so is that's actually, changed the culture. Yeah, this is the... But this is the beginning of the end, if that is the case. If the, the autographs, the, the sticker autos, the, when, uh, the autos that you know sell for 2 $3 that everybody sits there and complains about... That is the only thing that is holding us back from just mass production. Everybody gets a Joe Burrow silver if we do not have those guaranteed autos and relics in a box. I've been saying it for I'm years. I'm surprised they could have rolled out Mosaic with one auto a box. They could have doubled their they, print run. But it, I'm going to tell you right now, once you start seeing major releases like the prisms and the optics and they start changing the pack configuration and the odds to be no autos, they are making more of that product at that point. Yes. And if they're making more of that product, the supply and demand will catch up well, with itself. One thing you'd notice with Mosaic, and I'll, I want to hear C-Rad's uh, perspective on this after, is you can kind of see that there's little to no rookie content in Mosaic this year because they know they have to stretch that content out. I know we're in a pandemic and, and, and we didn't have a rookie premiere, so that might add to it as well. Mm-hmm. But you're seeing a lot of like lineman autos, retired guys that probably didn't cost a lot to sign that were ready, willing, and able to probably return their autographs and fast. Um, and you're seeing, you know, normally in a product this early, in a 20, uh, 12 <clears throat> box case, so there would be 24 autos. I, I would say three years ago, 
23 out of the 24 autos would be rookies. Yep. At this point, we're at like 5 to 10 a case are rookies, and the rest are vets, retired linemen like um, Javon Curse. Uh, there was uh, Willie Rofe. Um, there was, you know, I mean, these guys are collectible in a certain aspect, but it just tells me that Panini is preparing to make so much more product. And I don't know if the supply will outweigh the demand. I don't know. But you can kind of see that with the holding back of some of the rookie content. What's your thoughts on that, c Red? Yeah, I definitely notice it on this on this particular product, um, exactly what you're saying. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see, um, you know. Hopefully, whenever we get out of this this pandemic and and things get back to a little bit more normal, and we have a regular you know rookie rookie premiere event next year, hopefully maybe I don't know maybe two years from now. But right now they they, they are seem like they're they're stretching these these rookie autos as far as they can for sure. Yeah, um, oh, I I mean I'd like to jump in and talk about the rookie the rookie premiere and the rookie photo shoot yeah. real quick. I uh, I'm scared that that is going to be a thing of the past. Mm. Panini has to flip a pretty substantial bill to put that on. Mm. If you can basically put out the same, if not more content mm. without having to flip that bill for the rookie photo shoot, then why, wh why would you, why, why wouldn't you cut that? Why, that'd be the first cost. If I was in the boardroom for Panini, that'd be the first cost I would cut. Yeah. I, um, I, I, I definitely see your point. My, my my thing is that I don't know if I'm the only one that feels like this, but, you know, obviously with no rookie premiere event, they weren't able to take photos of these rookies in their NFL uniforms. So most of the most of the stuff, even up to Mosaic, those photos are photoshopped. So it's like very obvious that it's like it almost looks like like I'm looking at a Madden but, 2021 but you, card. But this is tricky because you have been at a rookie photo shoot. Yeah. You have seen how they go about taking the photos, and when you open up the product, you remember specifically what where those photos came from and the setting, mm -hmm. right? What most most collectors have no idea what the difference is. Like they don't know that this is a photoshopped college photo yeah. that basically has them in their you know yeah they they're no, well, nobody nobody I mean they. The average collector is not going to know the difference. Actually, Man, it, it I would sticks say out like a sore thumb. I would actually year, say the average person who's even in the industry could be a breaker or an online retailer wouldn't know the difference. Man, it, st it sticks out real bad to me. You're probably right, but it, for me, like, I'm seeing these pictures. I'm like, man, it well, looks like some Madden graphics to me. Well, here. one thing though, one thing that you guys we we don't really know is how much time each card takes for them to Photoshop. Because they're paying that person probably hourly, um, where maybe that cost gets pretty close to the rookie premier cost. Because you have to do um, at least a hundred players for every set. Now I don't know if they had a team out there over the weekend snapping photos, you know, to to use those in upcoming. I don't know if they're allowed to do that. I'm sure there is some photographers out there, um, but I gotta think that's a pretty tedious process to do that, where they're could just grab a photo of, you know, Joe Burrow throwing the ball at the rookie premiere instead of having to take his LSU photo and turn that into a Browns but, uniform or a Bengals uniform. But for this year, what if you just have to do one Photoshop job for every card? And what you do is that you just zoom in and zoom out to make it look like a different photo. You could, yeah. Photo. yeah. They, do it, they do it all the time in baseball. Yep. Um, so... Again, yeah, you're, how many how many releases are there going to be in the football category? Who knows? If they can just if they only have to do one player one time, then I think they're still saving money. I right. mean, you're pretty good at Photoshop. I think I think you. No, be able I'm to not. I'm not that good at all. Look at, look at this. I mean, again, getting back to this. I mean, you got a real serious graphic design skill. Yeah, here. I mean, I, I I took a lot of time on that. Oh, I really yeah. did. I mean, it took majority of my morning to get that get that one ready, but um. Well, I wanted to hit on some of the prices of the guys that aren't necessarily in this year's product. I want to go over some of the big-name quarterbacks and their rookie card prices. Um, and the, the, the data is shocking. It goes along with the whole thing that's going on. So if you look at a Cam Newton, recent sale of a Cam Newton 2011 Topps Chrome, um, BGS 9.5, 
$224 sold on Sunday, maybe around game time. I don't know. Um, if you go back to March 17th, you could buy as many as you want at 40 bucks. <laughs> so that's in March. <laughs> Granted, he was not on the Patriots, I don't think, at that time. Um, but that is a shoot came up right there. I mean, from $40 to $200 and uh, mm -hmm. some change. So uh, you could also look at your boy, Derek Carr, um, a 2014 prism, which is absolutely the worst design they ever made, along with 1415 basketball as well. But that Derek Carr card doesn't look too bad. Um, Gem Mint 10, they're selling for like 160 and there's one that's ending and probably ended already, 125 So they're, they're trending around 160 If you go to the data, you could have bought some for $22 back in February. So... That Vegas Dave so, Spike, man. I, no, it's just, <laughs> quarterbacks, shiny quarterbacks. Derek Carr is just awesome. He's an awesome quarterback. So. Matt Stafford is selling for $475. Matt Stafford is mediocrity at the quarterback position. Um, I'm not saying he's terrible, but $475. Granted, there's probably less of that. I, I was going to say, like, in 2009 to get a refractor, and to get it to PSA 10, probably pretty tough. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you can see one sold in July for 220 or best offer. So that is a literally a two-month turnaround doubling your money. You're seeing this trend with almost every quarterback. Look at every quarterback that's starting. Um, you're seeing the same thing. Obviously, Tom Brady sells well no matter what, but a recent sale of a PSA 10 um, went for $11,600. But a 9.5 in August sold for 4,800. So even Brady's almost done. <clears throat> Let me ask you guys a question real quick, Bob Brady. Has he has he cemented his legacy enough? And I know this is a silly question, but no matter what he does this year with the Buccaneers, say he has like you, he started off really bad the other day, right, for his debut game as a Buccaneer. Say the trend continues, Father Time is obviously catching up to him. He has more interceptions than touchdowns this season. Um, you know, just a whole, just there to have a losing record. Does that do anything to his card market and the legacy that he's already nah, built? He, he he's the best at his position. So card wise, if you want to look at the value, the best at their position, you have Tom Brady who outsells everybody. Mm. Uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, <laughs> who outsells every every other running back. Yeah. Um, no, and I'm I'm serious. Like I, I wish I was joking. I know, but I'm not. I'm not joking. And I want everybody to understand and think about that and put it in perspective real quick. Yeah. Like yeah. the best selling running back right now in the hobby is Clyde Edwards Hilaire. How many games has he played, Doug? Oh, one. One. But getting back, get right? getting yeah, getting back to your point, I don't think there's uh, Tom Brady could finish out his career. Uh, with Six Super Bowls is all you got to no, say. But, I mean, I mean, he basically can finish out his Buccaneers career 8-8 uh, eight and eight every year, not make the playoffs, uh, have more interceptions than touchdowns, and he still is Tom Brady. And his cards will always sell for, you know, a ridiculous amount. I, I, I agree. That's 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 what I thought. That's what I, that's my thinking as well. And we actually went a little bit more in depth with Clyde Edwards Hilaire on the NFL Blitz show. So check back on Mojo Break Media for that, as well as our picks um, that we make every week as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's something to pay attention to. Like I said, on uh, you'll see on the other show is I would not get too wrapped up in some of these non-numbered cards because you just don't know what's going to happen. If you're buying a numbered card, you're buying an autograph card you know that there's a certain amount produced. Um, when you're buying a card like a stained glass or something like that, especially stained glass not being rookies. I mean, I know Patrick Mahomes is on the path to be the next Tom Brady, but, I mean, it's a stained glass card. I mean, there's no rookie card logo on it. So I, I just wouldn't get wrapped up in this at the prices they're at. If you really, really want one of these cards, I would let it ride out until the end of the year. you got to have a little bit of patience, like the Guns N' Roses song, and, and just hang out. And you could probably get one of these cards for a quarter of the price. Um, I, I think the fire is hot right now. I think the hype is hot. And uh, sometimes you're going to pay these hype prices. So I 100% on some of this mosaic stuff. If you can get a premium, I would flip it and sell it right now and, um, you know, wait and buy it months later after Prism and Contenders and we're in the, well in the me midseason of the NFL or even late into the season. Um, so don't know when this bubble's going to burst, but we're, I mean, we're seeing group break spots of Joe Burrow sell for 10 grand in a mosaic case, which I doubt got paid, but hey, we're no. seeing. 
Couldn't, couldn't. There's have. no way. There's no way because you buy a case for Because I actually looked after that in the uh, the Bengals spot in a six box break on eBay, same 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 day, sold for a thousand bucks. So, how could a full case break just Joe Burrow sell for ten grand? Exactly. Um, and that also, you need that you need to take a step back and go, what you see on eBay is not legit. Yes. Yes. I, I do. Uh, yeah. I want to talk about. I did want to talk about this one of these episodes because things sell on eBay and things don't get paid for all the time, all the time. So you can't really trust like it all the time. All the time. Like all I, the time. I would. Time. <laughs> if you're trying like every, to like, I. What do you think percentage wise? Like, Ooh, let, let's actually let's throw this out there. Like, what do you think percentage wise completed auctions? What 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 is the percentage that you sports cards um, not not everything I I, I want to say it, it it depends on the 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 threshold of the the uh, the value of the card after a certain amount one dollar to ten million the whole the whole thing I think, everything I think cards the under take like, that in consideration as well because like if it's a if it's a two dollar card it probably is like a ninety nine point five percent exactly chance, exactly chan- exactly chance it gets so I would say in, in the cards that are over. Cards that are over a thousand dollars, let's say that. I think the majority of the time that they don't get paid after an auction, shoo, man, what, what, what number I'm going to throw out there? 65, 70%? I, I think that's fair. I think I would actually say, and I'm taking in account of every auction, every price, I okay. think it's about 8% that don't get paid. About oh, 8%. 8%. About okay. 8%. Overall. Overall. Oh, for well, the whole thing. Okay. And that's something to keep in mind. Obviously, if it's a lower numbered card, you can't get that many comps. But if you're dealing with a silver, I wouldn't go off of one comp. There's people on Facebook like, last comp is $1,100. You know, well, one sold 1100 and then three other ones sold at 600 So I would do more research to make sure that, that w- there just wasn't one that sold at that and you're getting, you know, getting taken, basically. So, but we, we have mentioned it in shows before. I would love... And maybe we can all try to collectively get eBay on board and let's make like some kind of check mark that this thing got paid. That that would solve it all. That would solve every question that we have. I got you. I got. I, I live right down the street from. I'll, just, well, I'll go, knock on I'm their gonna, door. No, I'm gonna knock on the door and talk to Mr. eBay and be like, "Hey, eBay." I mean that'll. I mean that would be in their best interest too. There's no skin off their back because. If somebody sees a card got paid for like at six k, and then the next one goes for six k, they can be like, "Well, the other one got paid for six k." I, I always sometimes they people are like, "I got shield, I'm not paying, I'm out, blah." You know, exactly. I always exactly. felt that they could easily put this system in place if if the card was paid for and shipped, because that's another thing. That I mean, people can get paid for a card and never ship it. True. So that's the other way that it works, and the basically the buyer gets screwed in that sense. But why can't you just have a check mark, ship and paid, shipped and paid, or be ship, ship and pending? Or no, stuff, yeah, well, yeah. no. Like if it gets paid and shipped, it gets a check mark when you look at the completed listing. It has like you know green for it selling, and then right below. Paid and shipped. And it should be able to be done automatically, right? Where there's not somebody that has to work at eBay. So, so then if it doesn't get shipped, it doesn't get the check mark. And you're like, well, like, what happened here? Like, maybe I shouldn't take that. Well, yeah, that, that $10,000. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't take that for my data now because, like, it was paid for. But obviously, there was an issue with the transaction. And it would help with when I want to buy from that buyer, I can look and go, man, you've had a lot of transactions where, like, it was paid, but it was never shipped. Like, you want to tell me, are you like not printing your your label from PayPal or eBay or are you like doing it yourself like I have some questions right or how many shill bid scenarios where maybe guys are shill bidding their own cards they're not getting paid so now a guy has eight listings in the last month that didn't get paid yeah then you then you basically when you go when you go to their their stock that they have to bid on you're going to be like man I don't know if I really want to buy from this person because what's going on like why are they always having auctions and never get paid uh, Jason brings a point. Mercari is you don't get paid until the buyer gets the item and rates you, which that's a little weird, but I, I can kind of see that perspective. Um, but you know, that opens, that, that opens up a lot of people that are not like, you know, that might take advantage of that, that system. Isn't that how stock X work? You have to, 
you have to wait till the person gets to get your money. Oh, really? Well, because don't they uh, stock X shoes sometimes like you selling your Jordans. And if it's sold, don't you have to send it to okay. stock X first? And so then I, I have you I've, had an I've, I've, I've actually I'm glad I'm glad you brought this up because I the, <laughs> about a year ago, I ripped on stock X. I remember like when they had the stock X Chrome and I ripped on it. I actually, I think out of all of us, I've, I've used StockX a fair amount to buy shoes. Trader. I, Trader. Um, I love you, StockX. You're, you're a great company. Um, but, you do a lot of cards these days, too. Yeah. But, so when you buy something, so you basically can, you can either do an offer or you can buy it at the price that they're asking. They're asking. StockX physically doesn't have the shoes. The, basically, they're like a consigner. And then the person who sold the shoes, who had the listing, they send them, and you actually get notification that your shoes have been sent to StockX. Now with StockX, they go through, they put a little like keychain on it, and they certify it. And they're like, okay, these are legit Nike, whatever. And then they pack them up and ship them to you. So like they actually get shipped from the customer who's selling but to that's StockX. Like, so it's a two week, three week process it, then. Yeah, you, you, it's, I mean, best case scenario, depending on how fast, and I don't think the seller gets paid until, until I physically exactly. receive the, car, like the, the, the say, shoes. Yeah. So, but if I'm trying to, you know, if I got a date on Saturday, I'm trying to go to the club and on Monday I'm buying my Jordans, I'm not getting them in a week. So it's no, not. No, yeah. Okay. When you buy shoes from StockX, it is not it's for, it's not for the instant gratification yeah. buyer. Yeah. It's for somebody who's like, I want these. I can't find them anywhere else. I want to pay a good price on them, but I'm in no rush to get them whatsoever. Gotcha. Um, and then when you get them, you kind of sometimes you forget that you even bought them. It's so long. You get them in like two and a half weeks. They're all, <laughs> you know, you hanging out, watching some TV, sipping some sodas, and then you oh, oh, you man. bought you bought some 1995 up tempos, and you paid like 170 <laughs> bucks for them. But That's whatever. 